All right, we're back. Going to talk some more about the NFL. I've done a couple of these. i got like seven pages of notes here. We're just going to talk a little bit about each team, what we've seen over the last couple of weeks. This one's going to be not as long as the college football one you just saw a couple of days ago. Uh, yeah, the Monday night game just happened. Obviously, Chiefs took on the Saints. The Chiefs are still the Super Bowl favorites. They can win in so many different ways. The adaptability of that team is actually insane. I mean, they turned Kareem Hunt, Juju Smith-Schuster, back up tight ends into key pieces while controlling the ball against the Saints for almost 40 minutes of game time. I mean, the Chiefs just continue to figure out ways to win and for the Saints the injuries are really starting to pile up right they started the season 2-0 you saw a lot of promise in this team but obviously they're dealing with losses on the offensive line in the secondary Derek Carr is now potentially out you started 2-0 if things don't get healthy quick you could looking at a 2-6 and six team next up let's talk about the Jets right Devontae Adams is not going to save the New York Jets of course he would elevate the Jets passing attack but he can't fix an offensive line that isn't blocking anybody and he can't run the ball so unless he can do both those things he really doesn't solve the problems that the Jets have and then for the Vikings, they need Aaron Jones to get healthy ASAP. He's been a key contributor in their 4-0 start. There's even now 5-0. And the offense looked completely different without him on the field after he got hurt. He needs to get healthy soon. For the Jaguars, even though they got a win over the Colts, bigger things are not destined for Trevor Lawrence in this team. In the year 2024, Joe Flacco led the Colts offense for almost 500 yards. He threw for 359 of them. And they're missing nine starters on both sides of the ball. Not both sides, you know what I mean, both sides combined. This, that team is still has a long way to go. And then for the Colts, the AFC South still runs through Jacksonville. I know what you're saying. You already heard probably like, what the hell is this guy talking about? The Texans exist. I get it. But if the Colts want to compete with the division title, they need to be able to beat Jacksonville on the road. And they haven't been able to do that. The last time they did that, Obama was president. That's like three presidents ago at this point. For the Dolphins, they found a hidden gem in running back Jalen Wright. Logging 13 carries for 86 yards. Obviously, Raheem Moster came back, but Devon A. Chain is hurt. Devon A. Chain's been out. Raheem Moster's been out. We've seen the rotating cast there. There's a spot for him to carve out a consistent role. He just got to take it. And for the Patriots, they need a real wide receiver to jumpstart this offense. I'm glad they're not throwing Drake me out there because all it would do is destroy his confidence unless he is just this game breaker. And, you know, it's, it's impossible to predict that from a rookie quarterback. Entering week five, Hunter Henry led the team with 14 catches and 148 yards. In five weeks, that's all you need to know. For the Bills, Josh Allen needs a wide receiver one to compete with the AFC elite. Against the Ravens, the passing attack struggled, and against the Texans, even more so as Khalil Shakir was out. All I'm saying, Devontae Adams would be a nice get. And then for the Texans, the depth at wide receiver and in the offense in general is going to help them offset a Nico Collins injury. After Collins got hurt, Stephon Diggs, I'm looking at it now, six catches for 82 yards. And backup running back Derek Ogumbawale, I don't know how to pronounce his name, I'm sorry, I butchered it. Six passes for 57 yards. You know, you still have Tank Dell, Xavier Hutchinson, Dalton Schultz. Obviously, Nico Collins is a stud, but they're going to be okay. Next up, I want to talk about the Commanders. They look like a playoff team, right? It, it's weird to say that because you didn't expect that considering they had the number two pick. Jaden Daniels is slinging the ball around. The offense is humming, but the defense is starting to have consistently good games, and that is the big difference in this team. On the flip side, the Browns, Kevin Stefanski probably not going to be the head coach there much longer. Deshaun Watson's struggles have been well noted, but the problem is the team is super undisciplined. 43 penalties so far this season. That's on the head coach. And the offense as a whole doesn't have any rhythm or identity. It, it just, you they have, something has to give, and Deshaun Watson still owed like $150 million, which is insane to think. But Stefanski is going to be the guy that gets scapegoated. Next up, let's talk about the Bears. Caleb Williams and DJ Moore, their connection is really starting to get better. You're starting to see Caleb Williams play better as the season goes on, obviously, because of that. DJ Moore is going to have better stats. DJ Moore, I'm looking at it now, 167 receiving yards and no touchdowns in the first three games. Last week alone, 105 yards and a touchdown against the Panthers. He's playing great. Obviously, they've, you know, they could have done some more stuff, but it's really exciting times in Chicago. And for the Panthers, it, you really I'm starting to look toward the trade deadline. You bench Bryce Young for a reason. Andy Dalton obviously is not your long-term answer. And if you're eyeing Shutter Sanders, Quinn Ewers, Carson Beck, Cam Ward, whoever it may be, there's no time like the present to start stockpiling draft capital. Next up, let's talk about the Ravens. This game against the Bengals is incredible. Obviously, Lamar is just a stud. The Ravens are above 500 after an 0-2 start, but the defense still has a lot of questions. Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase had a field day against the Ravens secondary. And on the season they rank, I'm looking at it now, 21st in yards per pass attempt and 28th in passing yards allowed. You want to win a Super Bowl? That's not going to cut it. And for the Bengals on the flip side, the next two weeks of the season are the most important weeks of the season. You're one and four. There's no room for moral victories, but at the end of the day, you are a couple plays away from being three and two. So this team is not as bad as one and four. But there's no, again, there's no room for moral victories when you're trying to win a Super Bowl. You have the Giants and the Browns up next. You need them both. Next up, let's talk about the Raiders, right? Aiden O'Connell, they brought him in midway through the game. He's not going to fix this Raiders offense. They bench Gardner Minshew, but O'Connell is under pressure most of the day, and he threw an interception. He's less mobile than Gardner Minshew. He's not as good at improvising, and he's not as good at handling pressure. 
The Raiders' offense is cooked, and I can see why Devontae Adams wants to get out of there. For the Broncos, Sean Payton has to let Bo Nix be more aggressive. They have to take the training wheels off, let him throw it downfield. They have to scheme up more stuff because at the end of the day, if they can do that, I know that's the question mark for him, but you have to at least try it because if you do that and he succeeds, then you open up the offense for the run game, and that completely changes the outlook of this team. Obviously, they were able to pull away a win against the Raiders, but the Denver defense is very good. If the offense is manageable, this team is not as bad as people think. For the Cardinals, they have to find a way to build on the performance this past weekend against the Niners. They were super physical. They relied on James Conner all day. He had... I believe it was 78 yards on the ground. He wore down the 49ers defense, and they controlled the tempo of the game. Obviously, there was plays made all over the place on defense by, excuse me, Marvin Harris and Kyler Murray. But at the end of the day, they need more of this physical game going forward. And for the Niners, obviously, the injuries are a big part of this game and this season in general, but that's only part of the problem. Missing Jake Moody may have impacted the way they played and called the game going for going to four, was it fourth and 23. That was, you know, that's a direct result of not having a kicker. But they also have a struggling defense, and they have eight turnovers in five games. There are other problems with this team. And on top of it, they have Seattle on a short week, the Chiefs, and the Cowboys all before the bye. This season has a chance to spiral if they don't get a hold of their stuff quickly. Next up, let's talk about the Packers. Tucker Craft is a dangerous weapon, and he's becoming more and more dangerous each week because Jordan LaFleur, that's not his name, Jordan Love and Matt LaFleur are finding him, scheming him. He, you know, against the Rams, I think it was a 67-yard touchdown. He stiff-armed the hell out of, I don't even know who that was. But yeah, he, he's a stud. I picked him up in my fantasy dynasty league. I'm hoping he develops because I got a couple tight ends. I'm looking to offload for some other stuff, but, you know, who knows? For the Rams, again, they found another gem, right? You obviously have Cooper Cup. You find Puka Nukua last year, and they found Jordan Whittingham this year, right? Obviously, Cup and Puka are both out. He needed someone to step up. Jordan Whittingham has taken that lead on the position. He had 87 yards this past week. Obviously, Puka and uh, Cooper Cup will be back. But Jordan Whittingham isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Next up, let's talk about the G-Men. Shout out to Jai. They found their lead running back. Devin Singletary is nearing a groin injury. I'm looking at this stat right here. Rookie Tyrone Tracy. I also put in a request for him on waivers. Please, fingers crossed. Carson Steele, kick rocks. I'm in a dynasty league. That's why it's really tough if you play dynasty. Tyrone Tracy, 129 yards on just 18 carries. Devin Singletary this year alone in four games has only one game over 65 yards. I know, you know, maybe flash in the pan, but Tracy and Neighbors, to me, Malik Neighbors, should be the guys going forward. And then the Seahawks, this was a weird game, right? They completely abandoned the run game, and it's not like they were losing. They lost this game by, like, nine, and it wasn't like it was they were down by 30 and then kind of inched their way back. They completely abandoned the run game. Kenneth Walker and Zach Charbonnet, both healthy, combined for seven carries. Geno Smith, if I'm not mistaken, of the team with 72 rushing yards, both of them combined had 30. That's insane work by the Seattle offense. Next, let's talk about the Falcons. I mean, hey, Kirk Cousins has arrived, right? In a crucial game against Tampa Bay, they needed it. They needed it. I'm going to read this. Cousins went 42 for 58, a career high 509 yards, led Atlanta to a furious comeback to tie the game, and then led them to score in overtime to win the game. They have flaws, but the Falcons are moving in the right direction. And for the Bucs, this is kind of a, a semantics and a, and a feeling statement that I'm about to make rather than a, a, a statistical one. But this loss could cost the Falcons dearly. Not the Falcons. I meant the Buccaneers. They couldn't milk enough clock. They moved themselves out of field goal range. Then they couldn't stop Kirk Cousins in both regulation and overtime. Tampa Bay had a chance to win this game, improve their record, strengthen their hold in the division, and prove that they're a real contender. And instead, they did none of that. And again, that's more of a feeling-based thing. But there is something to be said about momentum and vibes in a professional sports league. And you have a chance to really put your foot down and you didn't. It, you know, it's not some game breaker, some deal breaker, but damn, that sucks. Finally, Dallas and Pittsburgh. We'll talk about Dallas. The emergence of Jalen Tolbert is huge for the Cowboys offense. Obviously, Brandon Cooks is out with, I believe, a, like a knee infection. I don't know the exact injury. Um, but Tolbert stepped in. He, I'm going to read it here. 87 yards on seven catches. He accounted for almost 41% of the Cowboys' air yards. Some nerds will know more about that, what that means than most people. But having someone to take the pressure off of CeeDee Lamb, especially with the running game being as hit or miss as it is right now, is huge. And then for the Steelers, they have no idea what they're doing on offense. None. It's such a weird offense, even weirder than before, because it's been bad, but... There's just no consistency, right? The defense is as good as we thought it was going to be. But the offense is so, you make great plays, you completely disappear, and then you make stupid-ass plays. It's just they need to figure it out ASAP, or else it's literally just going to be another Steelers season where the defense carries them. They win nine games, they go nine and eight, and they get knocked in the wild card. But yeah, that's it. I like doing stuff like this. I love yapping about college football and football. If you saw my last college football one, thank you very much. Uh, make sure to comment down below what you want to see me do next. Uh, like and subscribe, and YouTube thinks you're going to like this video. Find out if they're right.